All right, so today I'm using a plugin called Llama.Vim here for NeoVim. And I just want to show you this here. So this is a Copilot-like extension. So if I take my cursor here and I just add a line down below, go into insert mode, you can see, there you go, it is suggesting a completion for me. And of course, I could hit tab to accept all of that. Or I kind of like accepting parts of it sometimes. Like if I like the very first line here, I've got a key map set up just to take the very first line here. And then if I want, I could grab the next one. Or if I don't like the next one, then of course I could hit escape here to cancel. And then I could of course come back and maybe try something different. Maybe I want to come up here, for example. Now you can see it's making a different suggestion. And this is actually the one I wanted. It's going to fill out a few fields that I have here, ID and type. I know I had both of those that I wanted to complete. So in this case, I can just hit tab to accept both of those. And then of course, it makes a next suggestion there. That one's not valid though. So I'll hit escape here to undo that. And if I undo this again here, come back into insert mode. So there's two things visible right now. Number one, the orange text here. This is the prediction or completion or suggestion, whatever you want to call it. And then the green text over on the right, basically stats about the process of creating this completion. And then over on the right, I've got some timing information here. Didn't take long, but that's because that was cached here. And then in addition to just completing the entire line here, there are other spots where maybe you want to fill something in the middle. Like if I were to just get rid of part of this word here, just delete that, maybe it's a typo. I'm going to save this though. I'm going to quit out so I don't have any context available. This time when I come in here, if I want to make a change here to fill in the rest of the line here, if I go into insert mode, I don't get anything here, even though my cursor is sitting right where it needs to be. However, if I bail out of that, and instead I use capital C here to wipe out the rest of the line, now you can see it's making a suggestion to me to complete that line. So when you are sitting in the middle of a line, keep in mind, you can just wipe out the rest of the line to generate a new completion. However, sometimes that can be problematic. And so depending on where you're at in the line here, like if I get rid of the dot here, if I get rid of a few characters here, all right, so now if I go into insert mode, watch this. Doesn't quite work. Sometimes I'll move the cursor around and there you go. You can see it's making a suggestion here. And if I hit tab to complete this, it'll accept it. However, if I hit escape right now, you can see the line wasn't actually modified. And so behind the scenes, I actually haven't accepted this completion yet. So the real line is still there. Of course, if I want to accept it, just hit the tab key and that will actually replace whatever was on the end of the line with the entire suggestion. All right now, in terms of running this, obviously you need a model on the back end. So I've got that running over here. I'm using the llama dash and server command here. This is a part of llama CPP. In this case, there's a special flag dedicated to this plugin. And basically this selects for you the model you want to use, which is one of the Quinn models. Specifically, this is using Quinn. 2.5 coder. It's using the base model as well. Do not use the instruct. That'll be overly verbose. And then in my case, I'm selecting the seven billion parameter model. There's also one available for three and I believe one and a half. And you actually can go up a size here to 14 billion, though that's a bit different because it uses speculative decoding. And then of course, I'm hosting that so I can get access to it remotely here. And verbose allows me to see some of the output as it's generating completions. So if I run this here, clear this out, Come over to my code here, wipe out this line, for example. Okay, there's a suggestion. So now if I come back over here, I should be able to see some information about the prompt that went in to generate that. I believe that's what we have right about here. Here, if I just copy this here, this is JSON like, I should be able to open it up in a new tab here. And if I paste that here, pipe that to JQ, you can see the various different parts of essentially what is the prompt that goes into this. So there's a suffix. And a prefix, basically everything before the cursor and everything after the cursor, that way you can fill right in the middle. And then there's also some extra information, context from other files that can be passed though. I just restarted NeoVim, so there's no other edit context available to stick in here. But essentially when you're editing multiple files, it can carry some of that history with you. It can start to make suggestions to you that might work based on the contents of another file as well. All right, so that's hosting. The other piece of the puzzle, of course, would be configuring the plugin for NeoVim here. So, or actually this works with Vim as well. This is the plugin right here. Here is the website for it. Here's a Git repo for it. So just add that to your config. Not much else you need to do. It'll work out of the box. If you want to customize it though, I have some changes I made in the init function. You need to configure some of the parameters very early in the process before it reads them and uses them. So for example, here, if I jump down a little bit, so there's a global variable here to configure this llama vim plugin. Of course, you can set something like the endpoint. Since I'm using a remote machine, I do that then put in the host name and the port that I'm running on. By default, it'll use localhost. So if you run that llama server locally, it'll just work right away. You won't have to configure that. 
And then you can do things like if you want to turn off the heads up display, that option's right here. Two is the default, which includes the text. And then you've got some of the parameters for the request itself. For example, how much context do you want before? That would be the prefix. So if I am completing here, got my cursor right here, maybe I'm going to take, I don't know, 100 or 200 tokens before. And then, of course, I would take X tokens after. So that's what that parameter is for. By default, it is 256 and 64. And if I scroll down, one thing that you probably want to change here would be some of the key maps. So there's three different ways to accept. If I come over here, maybe just stick my cursor right there. If I wanted to take all of this, I could just hit the tab key. That'll take everything, multiple lines. Let's just wipe this out here and get a real completion going. All right, so now that I've got three different lines here, I can hit tab to accept all of them, and then it generates the next one. Or I can undo that, go back in here. If I want just one line, I've got that set up with control and right. And then if I want just one word here, I can use alt and right to do that. A couple times there will get me through the line, and then I can move on to the next line if I want. So it looks like alt right doesn't work across lines here. So if you want to tweak the keys that are involved, by default, accepting a line maps to shift tab. Accepting a word here maps to control B, which is kind of weird. It is in insert mode, so that works. But then you also have accepting the full thing. That's tab. That's pretty standard. And then you also have one more key here that allows you to toggle the predictions if you want to turn them off here. So if I undo some of this and come back in here. So if I wanted to turn that off, toggle it on and off, control F is the default. So I can toggle that on or off then. I can't remember if you toggle it off, I'm not certain if it just stays off. No, okay. It's just this one completion. You can basically turn it off and just toggle it back on then. Also might be helpful if for some reason you're not getting a prediction, do that really quickly to make sure that it's actually requested a prediction and then showing it to you. And then maybe one last thing would be the machine that you're using. So in my case, of course, I am working on a beast of a GPU. I've got a 1590 running this. That's why it's incredibly fast. You don't need that though. So let me show you this here. Let me come over to my configuration and let's change this back to the default endpoint. So that will work off of localhost then. I'll go ahead and save this then. And then I'm gonna come over here just to make sure. I'm gonna kill off Llama server on my server. Come back over here on the same machine that I'm running NeoVim. I'll do a llama dash server here. In fact, let me come over and just grab that. I'll run the exact same model right here on my Mac instead. All right, once that's up and running then. And now if I go into insert mode here, give that a second. And dang, that was not bad at all. That was maybe one second. And I believe there's going to be some model loading time there. So if I hit escape here to bail out of that, maybe come up above here and do something new. This is suggesting nothing here. So keep in mind, sometimes it'll make basically no suggestion. That'll happen typically when you're sitting somewhere where it doesn't make sense. So if I just come up a few lines here and then add a line here. All right, I've got a suggestion for a comment. I like lots of comments, so it's seen lots of comments in my files and it's suggesting those then. And so, yeah, this is actually working really good here on an M1 Mac. It doesn't have a super beefy GPU in terms of crunching numbers, has lots of memory, which is a very important detail when it comes to using models like this. The more memory and the faster that memory is, the better the performance will be when you're dealing with these smaller models. So if you're looking for some sort of solution to be able to use Copilot running on a local model, running inside of NeoVim, definitely check this out. If for some reason you're also a VS Code user, there is a mirror plugin for this for VS Code as well. So come out here to the organization out on GitHub. And then instead of llama.vim, it's llama.vs code. And both of these plugins, if I come over here, maybe come up to the org level, the same guy that made llama CPP is the guy that's behind these plugins as well. So definitely check them out. They are well worth your time.